Hi, it's Madeline, and today I'm going to be reviewing The House of Hades, and this is part two of my review because I decided that my first one was getting really long, it's like over 20 minutes, so I'm splitting it into two. So this is the second half of my video. If you haven't seen the first half, I will link it down below so you can watch it, and I'll also link down below my reviews for the uh, last three books in the series and the Pierce Jackson and the Olympian series. So without further ado, let's continue my review. That rhymed. Uh, the five left on board being attacked by these dwarves or they're trying to steal all this stuff so they stole like Leo's tool belt and then he and Jason went off chasing them around like Jason got like caught up on the statue and then Leo was off like following them around and he built like he got stuff to build like this bomb or something or whatever <laughs> and um it was like just then thunder boomed overhead lightning flashed and bars on the nearest window burst into sizzling melted stubs of iron Jason flew in like Peter Pan, electricity sparking around him and his gold sword steaming. Leo whistled appreciatively. Man, you just wasted an awesome entrance. Yeah, I really liked that scene. I liked how um, Leo sent them off to go like annoy the Romans just uh, instead of killing them and sending them to Tartarus. But I liked that scene. That was, scene was really fun to read. So after that, um, I believe it was Hazel, Frank, and Nico that went into Venice, and there are these like cow things, poisonous cow things, and then Hazel was poisoned by the cows, and then because of that, they ran into this like farmer god, uh, some minor farmer god, uh, Tripto, Tripped a little, I don't know, whatever he's called, Trip. Let's just call him Trip. But um, so they ran to him, and then um, he turned Nico into like a corn stalk, and. <laughs> <laughs> and so he wouldn't help Hazel unless like Frank uh, got him a like fixed his chariot pi uh, chariot thing so he got his dad Mars album and he had to like uh, prove himself to his father so he had to kill all those poisonous cow things in the whole city of Venice and that scene was really awesome I really enjoyed that he had um, just like killing all of them, like hundreds and hundreds of these poisonous cow things and he kept going and going and like shape-shifting. He's really got on the hang of that now and he's just grown into himself afterwards because he had the, like the blessing of Mars and then um, Mars was able to give him the python to put on to trip to something's um, chariot and so the farmer dude turned Nico back into Nico and he healed Hazel and then he told them uh, that they were going to be po they had to like drink poison to get into the house of Hades and so he gave them I think it was barley to eat so that it would like absorb the poison they wouldn't like die or whatever so they went through all of that just to get barley so once the five were sailing back on the over two they had this encounter with this giant turtle and this guy Skyron who guy had brought back from the dead yet another person another villain in Greek mythology that was brought back um, but this scene, like, Hazel finally was starting to learn how to control the mist, like, once they got away from the turtle and then Skyrim was going to rob them, he, or, she and Jason went up the mountain to meet him and she was able to manipulate the mist to beat him. She remembered from, like, the Greek mythology, like, what he did to, uh, the people he was robbing or whatever, so when he kicked them off the mountain or whatever. And then, I, like, I was just thinking about that and... Why wouldn't you, if you're coming back from the dead and you were like a famous villain and everyone knows what you do, like um, how you defeat your opponents, why wouldn't you change it up a bit just so that to give them a surprise and then maybe you actually have a chance at defeating your opponent. So after all of this above ground, or I'll just call it above ground, we had the Cupid scene with Nico and Jason and I felt really bad for Nico in this scene. like. Cupid was not what you thought he'd be. I mean, just the thing about Nico being gay, I was really glad that Rick Riordan put that in there and just to have some diversity. Like, I'm glad in these books there's a lot more diversity. Like, we have, like, Piper, who is uh, Cherokee, and then we have, like, Hazel, who is African-American, I believe. 
And then we have Leo, who, who's Hispanic, and then we have Frank, who is like Chinese Canadian. So I was really glad that we had like the very the right diversity from like different people coming in from different parts of the world. So not everyone's like white and like American. And then we also had thrown in just like that Nico was gay, and I was glad uh, about that. Just a nice kind of thing. And I was glad that Jason kind of they kind of became friends over that. Like. Jason was supportive about him and he's like, you know, you could tell people and they would accept you, but Nico's just like, I don't want to tell anyone. So, um, I was glad that, like, Jason accepted that and he didn't tell anyone and then I liked how they just kind of were, like, friends after that and that was just really nice, just, like, how Jason would, like, stand up for him. And then after this, we keep going from scene to scene and, um, it's just one thing after another. It just, these books are really great. I love how, how much action they have. Them. Back on the R2 again. We had Kione, I believe that's how I pronounce it, from Quebec, show up on the ship. And Piper, I get Piper, if I don't understand, like people who hate Piper, like uh, she she got rid of this goddess, like she beat this goddess by herself. She was able to overcome her and I really love that like Piper became even more brave and she was able to defeat her and she turned Festus on permanently, which I don't really understand. I guess it's kind of like this magic thing she was using her charm speak and her charm speak is becoming more and more powerful as these books progress and just cut she's just becoming more confident in herself and okay, and we had afterwards the scene with Lou and Ojijia and Calypso and I absolutely love this. My friend I, I knew this was gonna happen because my because of the internet and was talking about it with my friend and when I got to this part she was like okay I'm gonna read it with you we read it together and we were sending each other all these little snippets of like our favorite parts and I just it was just a really nice break in all the tension just with Leo and Calypso and how they like hated each other at first and um what was it where's the scene Oh, I'm sorry, Sid. I just fell out of the sky. I constructed a helicopter in midair, burst into flames halfway down, crash landed, and barely survived. But by all means, let's talk about your dining table. He snatched up a half melted goblet. Who puts a dining table on the beach where an innocent demigod can crash into it? Who does that? Funny, I always love Leo's chapters to begin with. The shit's just even better with Calypso and them. I love their like going back and forth. They're kind of just like at each other's throats for a little bit and then. They started to soften up on each other. The raft showed up when it went in before, and then they kissed, and then he, like, I swear on the river, the whole thing with the swearing on the river sticks, and just the oath to keep at the final breath, and mmm, ah, it was so good, but so sad at the same time. Like, it was just the perfect thing just to put in to break up the tension with, like, the Tartarus and just everything else going on in the ship. So it was just this cute, this nice little bubble of, like, happiness we had, and then it would just kind of crash landed. When I was reading it, I really hoped that he would get back to the island and he wouldn't end up dying. Because of the like the line of the prophecy, they like an oath to keep with the final breath and we hadn't heard of like any oath before and so that kind of I was like, yeah, that's gotta be the oath to keep with the final breath thing and I just mmm I was very, very worried reading this. I was kind of mad but happy at the same time. So now I kinda wanna discuss the part, like, the House of Hades part, we had, like, um, Frank becoming Praetor and how he, like, Jason promoted him on the field to Praetor and how he was able to control, like, all of these dead soldiers and awesomeness happened and just awesome and Piper using her charm speak to uh, confuse all the monsters and just Jason, like, flying around with and everything. It's just awesome. And then we had Leo and Hazel off with um, Pacify, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Confusing for me, like the mist, I was having trouble picturing what was going on. Um, I don't know, I couldn't exactly picture it. And I couldn't figure out if like the mist was, uh, made things like real or if it was, I don't know, cause like they would make walls with the mist. So like if you ran into that wall, would you go through it or would you like run like, would you smack your face on it and, like, get, like, a bloody nose or whatever? Like, I don't, I didn't really understand how that worked. Like, it was still a good book. I still really enjoyed it, but that just, that scene kind of, it wasn't as great. But I liked it how, like, on the end, like, Jason and Piper and Frank showed up at the very end and how 
Annabeth and Percy finally got out of Tartarus. They got out of the elevator and basically just collapsed, which is totally understandable. We had Hecate show up and they were able to defeat the giant and everyone made it out of the House of Hades live and that was great. And then at the very end, um, we had Raina show up because she was traveling to get like the Athena Parthenos so that she could deliver it to Camp Half-Blood in order to try and reunite the camps. And I was really surprised that we didn't have the cliffhanger. We had this kind of like little picnic with everyone and it was like just a sweet little moment because everyone like Percy and Beth were out of Tartarus, everyone made it out of the House of Hades alive. Raina had just shown up and um, it was great. Anyways, that was my book review for the House of Hades. It was a great book and I really enjoyed reading it and it was just overall really amazing. I said before I gave it an 88%, great book. The whole series is amazing. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this book and um, I hope you liked this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!